OK, so obviously we're kicking off with this massive story in the Telegraph precedent. Yeah, OK, so uh, the Telegraph have gone with Iran launches swarm of kamikaze drones at Israel. Uh, so the IDF says warships and fighter jets are on high alert and US military is working to help intercept UAVs. That's unmanned aerial vehicles. Um, so this is obviously in retaliation. Um, uh, the, all day we've sort of thought... We looked at stories earlier today where there was this, uh, this uh, ship's been attacked mm. uh, by, uh, by Iran and everyone's sort of saying, oh, you know, it's soft retaliation, it's not going to get this far. There was reports of schools in Israel being closed, so that sounded quite serious. But then, meanwhile, there were pictures of Israeli people at the beach being quite relaxed. Um, I read a, an interview with a shop owner who said, ah, they talk about this stuff all the time, it won't come to anything. And then in the last, uh, what, hour now, I guess, we now know that they mm. have launched these drones and Israel are making moves to intercept them. Yes. And, as you say, retaliation for the attack on the Iranian consulate this April 1st yes. in Damascus. And so that's why Biden says he knew an attack was going to happen mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. The only thing that people... Some people are surprised that Iran, they normally hide behind proxies. Here they haven't. I even heard one person say maybe their proxies are sick of all this, like Hezbollah and Lebanon don't actually want to get involved. That was one theory. But the breaking part, as you say, is that there's, what, what 200 drones? It keeps upping. I heard 50, I heard 100, now 200 drones. Launching and the, the other thing is I've heard and this is only latest It's an ongoing situation that missile ballistic missiles may be launched at dawn The idea is to overwhelm the Iron Dome Israel's defense system you send the drones and the and then the missiles and it confuses the system That's the what I've heard. Anyway. Yes. Yeah to make a path through for more devastating weapons uh, Well uh, Netanyahu has said his uh, well, the IDF's defence systems are deployed and they're prepared for any scenario, both in defence and offence. We will defend ourselves from any threat and we will do so calmly with determination. So that's his statement. Rishi Sunak has also released a statement condemning Iran and uh, giving a support to Israel. And it's really just an ongoing thing. and It's very stressful and, you know, thoughts go out to everyone who's out there in the Middle East and just, can't we all just get along? That's my, that's my one thing. No, yeah. Apparently we can't. And um, here's, we've got some live pictures as well. I mean, one big question is whether the US gets involved and at what stage, because if they hit a, actually hit a target in Israel, then the US has to get involved. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they've been showing some reluctance to get that involved. Biden's been a bit sort of trying to get Netanyahu to sort of tone it down a bit. But after this, he might have to change his... his I mean, he was just saying don't. It seemed a little bit weak yeah. to me. They said, what's your advice to Iran? They just don't. It's like, I always, and I don't want to bring my agenda in, but I always wonder if this would have happened under Trump because his threats weren't don't. They were things like, I'm going to nuke Moscow or whatever the relevant place was at that right. time. Yeah. So it seems a bit weak to me, but I'm not sure. I'm not saying that's the reason. It's obviously a very complicated situation. But do we think the US will get involved and, and when? Well, that's sort of it, isn't it? If they do, could it be? Could that be the cascading? I mean, I don't want to... Well, it... so, so you heard it here first, but, uh, yeah, it's kind well, of no, terrifying. Well, no, there's still this middle ground where the Telegraph are using the phrase US military working to help intercept UAV. So intercept, that's still kind of prevention, isn't it, before they actually get there and do whatever. They... Apparently these drones can hang around until... I don't know, obviously, I'm not a weapons expert, but... It... <laughs> no, Leo's not here, so... Right. <laughs> yeah, more's the pity. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, Israel are, of course, going to say we can take out these drones. It's not a big deal. That's essentially what they're saying. They're, you know, they're saying how great... But the drones system. may not be the issue, as you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got the missiles, etc. Um, yes, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm wondering, when you say, will it be it, it sort of depends on Iran's nuclear status. The sort of latest I heard is that they have... They have nuclear capability, but not to the same degree. They have a sort of some warheads. Yeah. But if they were to do anything with them, they'd get immediately obliterated. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's a completely tyrannical regime that just overrules a bunch of innocent civilians who just want to live their lives like everyone else. And they've been dragged into this now, and it's not good. Not good. Definitely not good. I think we can agree on that. OK, maybe we've done... Do you think we've done enough on that? I think Anything we should else? say that Mark's coming back at midnight to do his... Yeah. Uh, to yeah, well, special. Mark will come back at midnight and do a special and cover it in more detail so we can get on with some of the other stories. So let's have a look at the mail on Sunday then, Jonathan. Yes, so the headline is, She is lying. Rayner Aid tells police. So Angela Rayner was last night facing mountain pressure over her two homes row after one of her former aides told police that she had not told the truth about her real home. So this is something that's proving to be quite de 
divisive, divisive within the Labour Party itself. Um, some commentators have said that it's not going to lead to the landslide that Labour are expecting. But the, um, uh, the aide, who has essentially dobbed uh, Rayner in, said that the former chief advisor has given a statement to Greater Manchester Police in which she states that her actual home was with her then-husband, not at the former council house, where she was registered on the electoral roll. So he is basically telling a different story to the one that she has given the public. Yeah, I, I've always thought this was going to be a big problem for Starmer. That he had to do something. He was playing it down. The story wasn't going away. It was so blatant with the two houses, completely given false information about that. So it's not going away. What do you think, Cressida? Well, you say that I'm doing my tax return at the moment. It can be very complicated trying to get your admin in order. Very easy to make a mistake. Um, no, I mean, it looks really bad, doesn't it? And it would be better for her had she not tried to get other people to resign in the past. Mm. Um, yes. And there's plenty of footage of that doing the rounds. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, I think yeah. if, you, if you did all the books, you just come clean as soon as you're caught. That's going to be my excuse. Like, oh, you got me. Like, yeah, yeah. people always expect that. About, well, at least he was honest about it. <laughs> yeah. It's the secondary lie that's the big Pay problem. Pay the fee and move on. And all this storm is saying, I don't need to see the evidence. Oh, come on. It's, it's just... It's not a good look, guys. I mean... They, they had it all lined up. Just don't do anything wrong. And now this has come out. Um, I yeah. don't think it'll be enough to... to Change the election, but it's very inconvenient. Yes, unless Starmer wanted to get rid of her secretly, and then it's very convenient. But well, yes. yeah, I saw John Sopel posting on X. I go, okay, I get it's karma, but really, what's the big deal? The left it is desperately trying to tone it down. It's like <laughs> that is the big deal. The hypocrisy. You yes. go after everyone else, Nadim Zahawi, Boris, Rishi's wife which is a bit tasteless anyway. And so, of course, it's going to come back to you. What, what, you don't have a leg to stand on now. So she has to... I mean, surely she has to go. Now, apparently, the Labour so-called far left, according to the Express, are sort of plotting who's mm. going to be the new deputy. And that's the problem. I mean, you've got this Labour, so they're all mental. <laughs> Obviously, I'm objective and just the host, but you've I got Zara... I think that's Salt. how they see it, Nick. But yeah, I'm yes. joking. It's a comedy show. It's satirical content. They're right. all excellent people. But who, who's going to come in? Do they know any ideas? Zara Sultana, one of the other ones? Could be. Um... <laughs> Let's go with Zara Zoltana. Yeah, because that's the one I just said, and it's the only one you've heard of. No, I've also heard of... Um... <laughs> Team spirit. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Like. It's well, not a real party. I mean, I feel, I feel bad about getting this story in, because I know we're going to get tweets or ex-posts going, World War Three, and you're talking about this, but we, it's in there, so we've got to finish on the star, Cressida. Right, the star. OK, uh, my name's Fido and I'm a telly addict. Uh, Mutts and Moggies are getting square eyes. Apparently, dogs and cats like TV, um, which I find hard to believe. Although, I've got a friend who's got a cat that demands cat television. What's cat TV? Actually, you might know him, Aaron. Um, oh, yeah? Comment, yeah. It, well, it's, it's a thing on my friend's phone. It's stuff like birds and fish or, what I don't know, stuff that cats like. Just Tom like. and Jerry over there. Yes, Actually, and, I guess cats well, wouldn't like Tom and Jerry, would no, they? No, this is... Well, it's essentially little tiny clips of wildlife, and they, they like it, but I don't know... Yeah, the star were doing a seagulls can watch football story, they said they've discovered a new rich vein they can move into, yeah, which animals, is animals watching. watching television. I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous that we're covering this. What's your insight on this one? I think just set your dog down in front of the TV and let it watch World War III unfold, like a good boy. No, I think that's neglect. I think you should be throwing a ball for your dog and interacting and, uh, you know, getting live mice for your cats or whatever. They, I don't know about cats. Never had a Keep cat. Keep the dog out of the conflict, let it live its life, protected. From the okay. images on well, the TV. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Very okay. Good. Well, that is pretty much it for the front pages. No doubt we'll have uh, more from that breaking story. But we've also got the Ukrainians living with gangsters. Is Suella hanging out with the wrong crowd? And the best people to get to know if you end up in prison. See you soon. Farage, Monday to Thursday from 7 p.m. Good evening. Well, I thought it was an absolutely knockout front page of the sun that went online last night and was on display all over the country today. Union joke. And there is. Well, you can just about make out that it's the Union flag, better known perhaps as the Union Jack, but they've decided to add pink and all sorts of colours to it. And that is on sale uh, for fans going to the Olympics in France this year to buy and to wear, which led to a great big panic. What on earth would be on the shirts, shorts and kit of the athletes? Well, a statement did come out mid-morning from the British Olympic Association, which said all Team GB athletes will wear the Union Jack as normal in Paris. However, Team GB kit itself is expected to include different shades of blue or red as in previous years. Well, I'm sorry, I don't really buy that. Now, we sent Adam Cherry out to Wembley today to ask some members of the public how they felt about this. This episode of Companies Fixing Things That Weren't Broken. 
we're going to be asking the people of London what they think of the changing colours of the Team GB Olympic logo. Take a look at this. The blue, the red and the, the white, it's perfect. I feel like, you know, it shouldn't be that controversial, controversial but, you know, it's iconic. I feel like the, the, the colours are iconic. Everyone's known London for being, you know, red, white and blue. I feel like it doesn't really represent England like that. Yeah, the, yeah. the colours of the... Like the colours are kind of random. I, I think it's very colourful. Mm. It's very uh, pinkish and uh, quite unicornish kind of thing, yeah. A bit too unicornish for Team GB. A little bit. Disgusting. Well, we're British. And our colours are not pink and what purple and... So, like, you know, some patterns on there. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, going crazy. That's not our flag. Yeah. That don't represent me. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Some breaking news on this developing story from the Middle East. Uh, British and US jets have shot down Iranian drones over the Iraq-Syria border. That is according to reports on Israeli television, although we ought to say those reports have not yet been verified. We will bring you some live pictures from Tel Aviv, Israel's biggest city, where they are on high alert uh, for incoming drones, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. Uh, Iran's state-run television news agency says they have fired all three uh, at targets inside Israel. Uh, unnamed U.S. officials have uh, said to the Biden administration they're expecting uh, more than 100 drones to be launched, dozens of cruise missiles and dozens of ballistic missiles, although Israeli forces say they are well prepared for any imminent attack. Now, there's been reaction from the U.K. The prime minister has condemned what he said is Iran's reckless attack. And uh, the, the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, has also uh, condemned the attack. He has called for calm. We know that the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is meeting his war cabinet uh, this evening, although, as I mentioned, they've been on heightened alert for almost two weeks now, ever since a, an airstrike on the Iranian embassy in Syria last week, which killed a number of top Iranian commanders. Israel has not yet taken responsibility for that, but Tehran certainly holds Israel responsible and has vowed to retaliate. Uh, this appears to be the beginning of that retaliation, and we will have special coverage of this developing story on GB News from midnight. So do stay with us. Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Nick Dixon, still here with Cressida Wetton and Jonathan Cogan. And we've also got the rest of the news to get through, so let's do the independent. And some Ukrainians granted sanctuary have been sent to live with suspected gangsters. It's like that old phrase, out of the frying pan into organised crime, Cressida. Nice. Uh, Ukrainians granted sanctuary in Britain, sent to live with suspected gangsters. Yep, yeah, so uh, there was a, a scheme for people to open their homes to Ukrainian refugees, uh, starting starting in 2022. And the idea was that if you, if you had a big heart and you wanted to give a home to a refugee, you could do that. But it turns out lots of wrong uns were in the queue for this, which is kind of what you'd expect when you think about it, because where there's an opportunity for exploitation, the wrong uns go. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is 
This is all coming to light now. And it, it turns out around a quarter of eligible councils, that's 37 out of 150 who were involved in this scheme, had been alerted to serious safeguarding concerns. So in some of the worst cases, people just disappear. They don't know where they are. Um, sometimes people were sort of forced to work on farms. They were made to pay rent. There's one awful case in Northern Ireland where a couple with a young child were sent to live with a convicted paedophile, which is, I mean, it's just horrendous. So, uh, yeah, it's not... Uh, I, I think it's one of these things where when there's an opportunity, the, the, the wrong and the bad people... The worst of us yes, come Yes, exactly. It, take it just wasn't checked enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd say hopefully it was only a small percentage of people doing that, but like you said, was it a quarter of... A quarter uh, of councils had serious... And those are just the ones that have been reported. Well, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's absolutely true. I mean, there's been reports of uh, families feeling like they have to almost be essentially live-in worker slaves because they feel so indebted and obliged that, that they just have to do whatever the family says, which is yeah. kind of horrendous. I, mean, but... it, I did think this when they announced this scheme, that it was, it was bound to happen, everyone taking Ukrainians. We've already seen some strange things, haven't we, where people take in, you know, young women and stuff. Yeah. This is like an escalation of that. It seems even absolutely. worse. Absolutely. There, there, there were stories a while back about... Um, sort of young women being taken in and then almost being... swapping out the wife for that young Ukrainian woman and then going back and stuff. And I think I must be naive, cos I'm genuinely surprised at this. I, I sort of oh, thought really? it was all middle-class people in Islington saying, oh, let's share no, our No, they like to us. talk about it, but well, they don't do it. I'm only not surprised cos I've already heard so many stories about right. it being abused. It was, it was sort of inevitable, but I, I feel like they need a better vetting process, a bit like Reform UK with some of their candidates, you know, when they... They had the dead candidate and so on. You know, it, yeah. I mean, maybe it's impossible, but I think you have to, you know, avoid situations. Maybe it's, it's just one of those collateral things of war that's unavoidable. I don't know. Well, it made me think about kids in the Second World War, and I bet I mean, there was no safety checks in those days, right? Yeah. OK. I feel like people are a little bit more sensible back then. I don't know. Let's what do, I do know? this one in The Observer, then. And Rishi Sunak has been urged to stop Swella Bradman speaking alongside some far-right people. But as this is The Observer, that term could just mean they don't want to sterilise children or something, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Well, the headline is Sunak urged to stop Braverman speaking alongside far right at Brussels convention. So Rishi Sunak is being urged to stop his former Home Secretary from attending a right wing convention featuring figures who have been under investigation for extremism in the latest sign of his waning control of his party. So Braverman, who's been a central plotter against Rishi uh, since she left the cabinet, is set to be one of the keynote speakers at this um, convention. Um, but the question is, some of these people there are actual uh, leaders of state. There's a Hungarian prime minister. And, I mean, you may not like their politics, but if these people are leaders of state, then they are, in some sense, legitimate speakers who are going to be, you know, discussing the state of affairs. So Definitely why shouldn't legitimate. you be speaking along? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor Orban, yeah. 100%. Pretty legitimate, yeah. Hmm. People raising concerns. It, this reminds me... Well, here's some of the examples. Also on the speakers' lists... Uh, are Rod Dreher, an American writer, who argued that the Christchurch mosque gunman who killed 51 people in 2019 did have legitimate, realistic concerns about declining numbers of ethnic Europeans. And that's just the kind of idea that makes people panic and say, oh, we can't have that discussion. But just, just allowing the conversation is no bad thing, right? And to say we can't have... We can't have Suella there. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. It reminds me of Brexit, when people... Uh, once people found out if you voted for Brexit, they couldn't possibly talk to you anymore, you couldn't share... Mm. They couldn't go to a restaurant with you anymore. It was just ridiculous, no debate. It, uh, it does think... feel like it's more of an optics thing than actually he's worried about anything. It's, it's, he's worried about how it will come across. And obviously... Well, no, it never works, does it? If you're in a, mm. an unhappy marriage and one of you's saying, look, I've got these concerns and I want to talk about them, and the other one says, no, no, look, don't worry about that, don't be extreme... You it's want me to tidy end. up more? That's far right, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I went to this event when it was in uh, London last year. It was not an extreme event. There was some praying, there was a nice meal. I believe it was sort of founded by Yoram Hazoni, who's not an extreme guy. It's a kind of Jewish Catholic uh, backing behind it. And it, there was all this reporting on it, in, well, especially on X and things and LBC and things like this, people getting hysterical over Douglas Murray because he was making a speech and he said, we don't need to, we don't need to get rid of nationalism just because Germany mucked it up a couple of times. So right. it was a kind of deliberate joke, obviously, using an understatement. That's a joke, right? Sure. And they all reported it like, oh, it's fascism. But it's, it's hysteria. The, the problem is... You're allowed a range of views on the left, quite an extensive range of views, mm. ranging to I'm a literal communist on mainstream TV, yeah. <laughs> ranging all the way to Diane Abbott saying Mao did more good than harm on BBC One on mainstream television. But on the right, of course, there's no equivalent because presumably of the, you know, horrors of the Second World War, there's... Mm -hmm. People are paranoid about the right having any range of opinions, so it's, the Overton window is so far to the left and it's so constricted. You have a few people talking about basically nationalism 
you know, fairly sort of moderate right-wing ideas, conservative ideas, and hysteria erupts. But even if it's not... I mean, for, there's another example here. A Polish politician who said he does not understand why anyone should want to be proud of being homosexual. And I can see why that's inflammatory. But it's not so dangerous that it's going to... You know, I would rather hear that person's opinion than it go festering. These, mm. these things yeah. are up for discussion. And, and I never trust him when it's taken out of context by the observer. Maybe, well, maybe yeah. he, he is wrong and I don't know. But, yeah, the equivalent ideas on the left would be allowed, wouldn't they, like, sterilising children? Exactly. At least now there's pushback against that. But yeah, I think people... Yeah, well, of course, it's, it's, it's the observer. What are they going to do? They're going to say it's, it's terrible and evil. And maybe it is, but we don't know. I don't think so. Let's do the mail on Sunday. And it seems there are no non-binary people in prison, Cressida. Religious war behind bars. How British white gangs from two major cities fight brutal war against Muslim extremists inside UK's toughest prisons. So, turns out, prisons full of naughty boys with, who need a, a cause. It's kind of splitting into these two groups. Uh, and this... The, the paper describes it as a savage religious war. Uh, although I do have to take a bit of issue. I don't think the average religious person would think that some of these behaviours are, are appropriate. It sounds to me more like violent young men in prisons are... More of a tribal element. Yeah, it's very, than, very yeah. tribal. And it... Basically, what this is saying is that Islam is on the rise in prisons. It turns out a fifth of white inmates are now Muslim, compared to 7.8% of the general population, which I thought was quite high. 7.8% of Muslims are white? But... Uh, I don't know. But yeah. anyway, that's what they're saying. Um, they're also talking about... The, what the prisons are really finding this difficult to deal with because they're not equipped for it. And, of course, lots of the staff are worried about accusations of prejudice, if they talk about mm -hmm. uh, crime rising or violence being, being more prevalent among Muslim inmates. Uh, maybe this is a case for DEI, get some more Muslim <laughs> prison guards. Yeah. Could work. So which side would you pick? Between the death before dishonor boys and the piranhas. No, between, you know, the Muslim... It kicks off, you're in there. You've I... got to pick between Muslims and the, and the white nationalist gangs, whatever they are. Well, I don't think, as a Jew, I'd be very welcome in the Muslim crews, but they do have better uh, meat quality in prisons, so... There's, yeah, it swings and roundabouts. Yeah, it can I go mean... either way. Yeah, I mean, it seems... I mean, Muslims are overrepresented in prison, so there's quite a few Muslims in prison, and then you've got... It's, it's such a shame, isn't it? Prison... It sounds naive, but the prisons are so violent. I mean, not supposed to be... You're not supposed to be... <laughs> it's the opposite. ..going there and get killed. You're supposed to be sort of safe, but being punished it's by like, the state, but like not, a, like, a killed and threatened. Well, like in school, when you put all the naughty kids together, hoping to make a good educational system for them, but it's just complete chaos when you have all the yeah. different... ADDs. That is the tragedy. Yeah. And so you have to pick, you have to get in there and you have to pick, you're like, which unsavoury people am I going to associate with, right? I've never been, I've watched films. They immediately have to <laughs> pick between one group or the other, right? They, they're on yeah. the yard, they look one way or the other. <laughs> it's usually Nazis and then, you know, sort of people of colour. And they go, hmm, guess, well, if I'm white, I have to go with the Nazis. Is, is, it, that, is it that simple? Is there, like an, like... is there like an audiovisual club you can join? I might do that. Yeah, well, we can, you can... <laughs> well, yeah, you can do a little work and, like, you're in the library working yeah. and stuff, but you are working with a neo-Nazi... You know, or it's like uh, I hope scheming. neither of you ever find out. I, that would I be... always think I'm going to go to prison. Do you ever have that dream? I do often think you're going to go to prison, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm too pretty to go back. I'm not. I used to be. Yeah, your, your best thing would be to... Best chance would be to get on with a particularly tough guy who finds you, you know, attractive. Funny. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I didn't think we'd get into this story in the middle of the, the war, but there it is. Um, I think they're all great guys, by the way, just in case they're watching. But let's do the Sunday Telegraph. And following the cast review, is sanity spreading across Europe, Jonathan? It might be. It hopefully is. Belgium and Netherlands call for puberty blocker restrictions following cast review. So Belgium and the Netherlands have become the latest countries to question the use of puberty blockers on children after the cast review warned a lack of research on the gender treatment long-term effects. Now, this is quite positive if you care for the uh, welfare and protection of children because... Um, puberty blockers, which were originally based on the Dutch protocol, um, have shown to be unscientifically... Sorry, they've not been proven to be... Uh, to do all the things that they were claimed to be doing, and they have a lot of negative side effects as well, such as affecting things as bone density and... Um, look, forget gender. Gender aside, the human body was meant to go through the puberty of the biological sex that it is. Forget the whole, like, gender debate in terms of pure biology. When you stop that, there's going to be, you know, untold complications, nothing's for free. Um, but, yeah, it just seems like there's a bunch of countries who are now um, sort of banning them for children. Yeah, I mean, weird. our problem was following the Dutch protocol. Why were we following Holland in anything? I mean, I it's don't know. Also, 1998. Liberal. I mean, that's yeah. ages ago. I was really surprised at that. I suppose in those days it would have been far, far fewer children. Uh, but that does seem a really long time, because we often say, oh, it's experimental, which clearly it is. Uh, but that's, that's quite a long time.
Uh, so, yeah, it was, it, I mean, it was sold to the world as a pause, wasn't it, the puberty blocker? And, of course, that's just not what it is. What I think is really interesting here is it mentions that 95% of individuals who get involved in puberty blockers then carry on with the gender-affirming stuff. Mm. But it's always sold to or has been sold to lots of parents as a pause to allow you time to think. Sure. But, on, but that's just not what happens. But on the converse of that, so young people with gender dysphoria who go through their natural puberty, um, those feelings only last in 15% of, uh, of young people. So it seems that the most efficient cure to gender dysphoria is to go through your natural puberty. And yeah, I mean, eighty-five it, percent of people will be absurd idea that you can pause the human body. Anyway, that's it for part two. But coming up, of course, more in this situation in Israel, but also a win for the Free Speech Union, a loss for Javier Millet, and was Shakespeare a woman? Obviously not. See you in a minute. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. So it's been a bit of a drier day for most of us, but there has been a few showers around. Low pressure never too far away out towards the north of the UK, but higher pressure down towards the south and the west does bring something briefly more settled. There have been those showers around and they will continue through much of Saturday evening, pushing in from the west across parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. And we could even see some snow continuing across the high ground here. Elsewhere, though, generally turning much drier through the evening, with those clear skies allowing temperatures to drop into the single figures, around 7 or 8 degrees across the south, but even lower further north, perhaps some frost in places. So a chilly start across Scotland, Northern England and Northern Ireland, but those showers quickly pushing in from the west again as we go through Sunday morning and into the afternoon. Further south, after a bit of a drier start to the morning, there will be some sunshine through the first part of the day, but some cloud bubbling up as well, and we could see the odd one or two showers across Wales and into northern England. Less warm than we saw on Saturday, highs of 14 or 15 in the south, and a little bit closer to average further north. Monday it starts a widely showery day across the UK. Bands of showers push their way south and eastwards through Monday morning. And then there will be some breaks and some sunnier spells between those showers, but they could be particularly heavy in the north. And a brisk northwesterly wind will make it feel cooler. Showers continue through the first part of next week with temperatures below average, but turning a little milder through the second half of the week. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Now, I believe we have some more live pictures from Israel. Here we go. So, I don't know exactly what's happening. I've just seen that Donald Trump has posted, Israel is under attack. This should never have been allowed to happen. This would never have happened if I were president. Fairly predictably. <laughs> First tweet you landed on there. Just yeah, open yeah. Twitter. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not actually on there, but he shares... And he truths socials onto Twitter, yeah. doesn't he? Which is kind of weird. Other people have to share it for him. But it's quite hard for us to know exactly what's going on when, when we're live on TV. People Very will be true. saying, why aren't you covering all the drones? But, yeah, it's quite disturbing that Britain and the uh, US are taking down the missiles. That kind of made me feel a bit sick in my stomach. But is that is protocol? protocol? Yeah. Is that normal? Or is it, does this mean it's World War III? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. We haven't been here before, have we? Um, no. So what's going on in these pictures? It just looks very peaceful yeah. at the moment. 
OK, well, it's just Tel Aviv. Let, let's right. move on and get back to some of our normal planned stories. Let's do the Sunday Telegraph. And Shakespeare might have been a woman, according to some woman, Cressida. London Library accused of hosting anti-intellectual conspiracy theory that Shakespeare was a woman. This is quite interesting. Somebody's in trouble for being too woke. It's really funny. And the people are trying to cancel uh, this. So it's an event. Uh, it's a panel discussion with a woman called Elizabeth Winkler, the author of Shakespeare Was a Woman and Other Heresies. Uh, and people are complaining about this. So uh, Oliver Cam, a journalist and author, has written to the chairman of the London Library, Simon Goodwin, raising concern about this great institution's promotion of a baseless and anti-intellectual conspiracy theory. Um, and I don't Get her on I... here. Well, <laughs> indeed. So this is quite fun, isn't it? Because it feels like the red pill base people are are trying to cancel somebody. They don't want any more conspiracy theories. They're done. That it's was the done. last They've one. Had it. I think let her go ahead and have her event and let... I'm a free speech absolutist. Let people, let Nick turn up and argue that Shakespeare was a man. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he was. One straight white man who was a genius. This is my revolutionary theory. We can't have anything. Not gay, not a woman, not multiple people, not Christopher Marlowe, although that's a, probably another straight man. Oh, he might have been gay, I don't know. But I'm saying it's one straight man just cranking out plays like there's no tomorrow. Then again, Shakespeare, he, he did go on a bit, so maybe. Jonathan, <laughs> no. Look, well, this is what I really you like. You could be a woman. Mr. Well, I dare you. Well, well, I don't know. That's the this worst is... thing that's happened tonight. <laughs> this, is, this is on par with the, uh, my favourite theory that Joe Biden is actually sort of four or five different people. Right. As I, I give it as much credence as that. He's barely one person. I thought he was person. half a... Oh, we're the same there joke. Sorry. Oh, guys. upsetting. I'm very sexist, as you know, and I think it is unlikely that Shakespeare was a woman because men get mania, don't they? They go... Uh, they, they become obsessive about something in a way that women don't tend to. And to create all of that work, um, more likely to be a man. That's a great well, point. Then. Obsessive sort of male autism, if you like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, apparently it's not... I mean, she blames nationalism and empire and gender and class, but whatever. Standard lefty but academic look, rubbish. Cam's got the last word on this. He says he wants to see a Shakespeare specialist added to the lineup. That's the answer, isn't it? Get more doily discu Well, yeah, or Andrew. Uh, more discussion, not less. Not, not stopping things you don't like. Just bring your team as well. Yeah, I'd probably add a Shakespeare expert to the Shakespeare discussion. <laughs> I'd call it old-fashioned. <laughs> Let's do the Sunday Telegraph and a victory for the Free Speech Union against the nanny state, Jonathan. Yes, good on them. I hear you have a podcast with uh, Chen oh, Nabonis set up. Mr Toby Young, the chairman, as we call him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Absolutely. legend. Um, over scared. a million views. Yeah, downloads? one point something million downloads. Yeah. Nice, Thank very you. good. Won't matter now. The war's happened. No, exactly. It was, Everything we. It was we've, good while it lasted. Yeah, we've uh, we've all had our time. So free speech victory as councils shelves busybody charters. So free speech campaigners, namely the FSU, have declared a victory in their fight against busybody charters as councils have started to shelve the measures in response to legal challenges. So local authorities across the country have used public space protection orders or PSPOs to impose increasing numbers of fines up to £1,000 for a range of activities, including loitering, swearing, or even walking a dog in the wrong place. But the key issue here, especially in the context of the Free Speech Union, is that some of these fines could be done for behaviour that was uh, that could cause alarm or distress. Now, that could leave room for offensive uh, you know, comments to be considered illegal, which is very anti-free speech, even if it's just somebody who's you know, disagreeing in a vehement way. Yeah, which it, you don't I, mean, want. I was amazed that the range of activities included loitering, swearing, or walking a dog in the wrong place. I mean, I, I like Victorian <laughs> England, but loitering. I mean, loiter. Are you it's loitering, awful. sir? Awful. They've just used the Bluff Act to get away with all sorts of things. I mean, half of me is like, yeah, people using their phones without headphones on a bus on yes. the spot, fine, Ipso. send them to prison. But no, not really. Um, it's clearly wrong. They're talking about uh, making catcalling. One of these offences. That's interesting, isn't How it? How am I meant to meet women? The death of love, exactly. <laughs> There'll be no opportunities left. I thought uh, Cat Collin was already had like a I separate think, law sure about it. Is. it. It's deeply frowned upon. Okay. Uh, all right. But, well, I deeply frown upon all of this. Hopefully, the Free Speech <laughs> Union will crush them into will. oblivion. Although I'm neutral and a, a host, <laughs> and we're regulated, and hope the council also wins. Let's do the independent and get your bingo strike card out because the latest group threatening to down tools is migrant workers, Cressida. That's right. Migrant cleaners strike threat as they demand same rights as white government colleagues. This is in the independent. Uh, so union members say they've been denied the London living wage plus the annual leave and sick pay entitlement that white collar workers at the department receive. And white collar... It's not white, white collar. They're talking about people in different jobs. So these uh, these cleaners are saying that over the years, 
uh, they, the conditions have got worse. Um, somebody's been there, somebody, for example, who's been there for 18 years as a cleaner, says uh, they've experienced terrible treatment, no sick pay, too much work. They're saying it's getting worse over time. But, of course, it's not that the policy is meant to target people of colour. That would be illegal and absurd. Uh, while the policy itself does not intend to target the workers because of their ethnicity, it nevertheless disproportionately uh, is detrimental to black, brown and migrant workers. So, not good. Now, I was looking at this. No sick pay, too much work, no proper holiday cover. Isn't That's just my job. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Jonathan, what was your take on that? Um, well, my take is I think it's great that she used, uh, uh, they're looking to negotiate for higher wages. I think that's absolutely um, commendable. Um, you know, negotiate for a better standard of living, uh, absolutely. But at the same time, I don't think it is an issue of race. Um, I think it just happens to be the uh, way that the jobs are divided. But not only that, it's the people who provide all the benefits for the white-collar workers. It's actually a different company who provide the contracts. Mm. So it's not even the same company doing differently. So. OK, well, I definitely, have, I definitely sympathise, and it's obviously a tough job. Mm. I never think that minimum wages or living wages really work. I mean... Companies just hire fewer employees or they find ways around and stuff. So I'm, I'm always a bit sceptical. But, yeah, OK, I think we've covered that one. Let's do the Sunday Telegraph. And Argentina's Javier Millet has broken up with his girlfriend due to the enormous pressure of his hair. I mean, work schedule, Jonathan. <laughs> it's a great lid. Yeah, he actually, similar to yours. Oh, thank thick you. yeah. barnet on top. Well, he accidentally cut half his off doing his chain store uh, stick. Did he? Yeah. Getting rid of departments, I metaphorically. Yeah. Afuera. All right, the headline is Javier Millet splits with lioness girlfriend over work pressure. So Argentina's firebrand president has announced he has ended his relationship with his glamorous actress and comedian girlfriend due to their conflicting work schedules. So, look, we've all been there. You're stressed with work. You've been thinking too much about the office and you get home and you just can't perform. It happens to the best of us. Right, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I didn't see that, that one coming. That's another shock thing that's happened tonight. But what do you think, uh, Cress? I mean, she, it's her success, apparently, has been the yes, problem. Yes, well, it's feminism, isn't it, Nick? I didn't want to say. Yes, you did. She should be um, the one strong woman behind I mean, every strong man. Good What's for her, that? and I hope she's having a lovely time, but you can't get away from the fact that in the dark old days, there was a couple and one of them would be the one earning the money, typically the man, and everyone would, they would follow around and they would build a life together and they would have what Peterson calls uh, a continuity, ca continuity of narrative. And you can't have a continuity of narrative when you both work God knows how many hours a week, for better or worse. I'm not saying she should be forced to be chained to the kitchen sink, but this is kind of a consequence of... It's one of the unintended consequences of feminism, isn't it? Mm, what's it called? A continuity of narrative? Is that yes. what you said? Yes, yes, because over the years, Peterson and his wife have got this woven... Uh, you know, they've got old family photos and stuff, and, and what's happening here is she's already been married, that has, uh, hasn't worked out, now she's had another relationship, that hasn't worked out, and she's following the career... And, and... Well, since then, Javier, is, he said he's gone, he's gone no contact with her. Uh, he's joined the gym to get ripped and he signed up to a PUA boot camp. It does. It says they love each other, which is a bit weird, isn't it? Um, uh, they've got no contact. He's going to have trouble ripped. with the next one if he's still saying he loves her. Very sad. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I th I, yeah, death of you, love. You hear behind every strong man's a strong woman. Now she's off doing her own career. World's gone mad, John. <laughs> PC gone mad. OK, well, that is part three smashed. But coming up in the final section, why the 80s were better, dead butt syndrome and sex robots. Jonathan brought his in from home. See you in a minute. Britain's Newsroom, weekday mornings from 9.30. One more story in. Uh, Milton Keynes, absolute chaos in the city. 300 odd youths arrested or at least involved in a, uh, a, a big, stampede. A stampede. A yeah, stampede. What, what's been going on? A stampede through the. Uh, there we are. This is the video. So this is a stampede through a uh, shopping centre in Milton Keynes. I think, Amy, you live there, don't you? You live nearby. For those, I mean, on, for those on radio, we can see literally hundreds, scores of kids. I think kids. about 300 kids. Are they in school uniforms? So, yeah, quite oh, yeah. Um, This is as they've security, broken up from school, presumably. Security tried to intervene. They've been accused of being heavy-handed. But I think this speaks to the fact that the landscape of youth services has just been decimated and there's literally nothing for so kids. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. You think that do. this has happened because social services have been diluted? Youth services. This is because there's no police around, there's no oversight, there's no deterrent, and 300 kids think that they can run through a shopping centre, Why frightening shoppers out of their lives. going to a shopping centre? Amy, sorry, my kids, lit... my kids would not be behaving like that because there's no ping-pong available at the local Aren't yeah. your kids, like, youth age centre? four and five? These are teenagers, and our teenagers are headed into a world where there are no leisure services, oh, there are no... 
have nothing to do with crime. If we up the ante on basketball, it's not going to stop kids being stabbed on the street. What creates antisocial behaviour is having nothing to do. It's lack of discipline in the home, lack of discipline in the home, and lack of policing on the streets, and a judiciary and a penal system that is utterly liberal. You're going right to the end of the line. What about the preventative measures? But what about the people that these people affect by running through a shopping centre and stampeding? When there's right. mothers with kids in prams, frightened out of their lives, and we're worried about the social services I'm aspect talking about that's Karen, perhaps led to it. You're talking about stick, yeah, right? Yeah, So how long does your solution take to resolve it? Mine takes about 30 seconds. More oh. police, bang them up. Yours... Russell, should parents be fined? More police, bang them up. Uh, absolutely, and the kids should be taken to task. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made my argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing it up and down the country. That was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. I believe we have some more images from Israel first to have a look at. There we are. That is Tel Aviv at the moment. We've got Mark Dolan's special coming up. He's going to do an hour from 12 a.m. specifically on this massive story. There are rumours on X that the U.S. has shot down one of Israel's drones, but I, I believe that's not confirmed, so I'm just giving you what I'm reading on X, but I'm not saying that's official. Uh, any, what, we, yeah, um, what are we sort of looking for in this image? It's just... Well, presumably... if. Presumably, if the drones attack, but uh, right, okay. Anyway, Mark is going to give us a layer. We're going to send it over to Mark Dolan, who's you know he's a he's a seasoned <laughs> pro at this kind of thing, rather than leaving it to some comedians. So I think we should get back and do uh, other stories now. Let's do the independent and the joys of being '80s famous, Jonathan. It was a golden era. So Michael J. Fox says achieving fame in the 1980s was harder. You had to be talented. Rinsed. That is uh, Michael <laughs> yeah. J. Fox. Michael J. Fox uh, dunking on everybody nowadays. So fair enough, he was an absolute legend, still is. Uh, he's in my favourite uh, film trilogy of all time. Teen Wolf 1, 2 and 3. <laughs> he was only in one, wasn't he? I don't As know. a kid, you didn't really notice, but he wasn't even in <laughs> Teen Wolf 2. You just accepted it. Like, oh, the wolf's back. Yeah. Just some random guy straight to video. But he's only in one. That. Yeah. They're both so, good. So what's he so, saying? To be famous now, you don't have to be talented, you just have to be there. You do have to yeah. be relentless, don't you? People who are good at social media are good at... To be being. avariciously narcissistic. Oh, it's yes. the worst thing in the world. You can get famous for absolutely anything. Do you then... know what, though? People that were famous in the 80s would have had... He, he mentions it, that you just did the job and then you went home and you're in your hotel room or whatever. Whereas nowadays, all the famous people, when, you know, Philip Schofield's up to no good or whoever, they, they get a lot of feedback, don't they, nowadays? It's a different job. Yeah, they get more people telling them to die on a daily basis. Exactly. Mm. Uh, they should close those DMs. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, it seems like he's saying two different things. One, he's saying we didn't have social media, which was left to our own resources and it was an amazing time. Sounds way better. Yep. They had a mystique, but he's also saying they had to be talented. And I do agree, the talent level was way higher, especially music, even more than film. Mm -hmm. so Prince, few... Kate Bush, of now course, you've got some MJ. degenerate with an auto-tuner talking about their body parts. I sound like Ben Shapiro. <laughs> well, actually, I don't think that uh, wet ass. No. Um, so, yeah, I think... What do I think? Yeah, I mean, he's right, but there were much fewer platforms back then. It was all... You were either in a big movie or you had a big rec record deal or you were... Uh, you know, on TV. Well, that's true. You wouldn't have had Justin Bieber just messing about in his bedroom and becoming famous. Yeah, I mean, Who knows who we missed? Back in the day, being on TV meant something. Now they let anybody on. I'm starting to think the way the world's going that the 80s was better in all ways. We know the 90s was and the 80s. It was a much better time, wasn't it? Yeah, I've, I've said for, I'm up for that. Pause it at the 90s. I think that's when we were about right. Maybe the early 2000s, but everyone after that got a bit crazy. 
Eighties, we had the Cold War, but that's starting to look a bit better than Hot War. Do you know what I mean? I, might, I think Cold War might have been, you know, better than it seemed at the time. It's like, can we cool this war down? It a bit? had an aesthetic. Yeah, well, less, you know, less stuff blowing up. But anyway, let's do the Daily Star Sunday for some reason, and the risk of dead butt syndrome. We're going to get so many tweets while you're talking about this, which is what you get when you accidentally watch an entire Christopher Nolan film, Cressida. I've written. Nice. Is that long? Right. Brits who have desk jobs <laughs> at risk of developing dead butt syndrome. And despite what Nick Dixon thinks, this is a very important story because a lot of people work in offices, Nick. You've got to get on board. Uh, dead butt syndrome, also known as gluteal amnesia, is a condition... Amnesia. Your, your ass forgets to work. I wish my ass had amnesia. Well... <laughs> I'm not sure we're allowed to say any of these words. I mean, if this is the thing we got, I want to apologise. Imagine this is the thing we get taken off air for yeah, or, imagine, or get a strike for. Imagine. I don't want a strike. Uh, not on my glutes. So, well, exactly. But if you sit down for a long time, your bottom, the muscles therein, uh, don't know how to work. So, of course, what's the advice? It's get up and move around every hour. And then there's a list of exercises, banded squats, the monster walk, frog glute bridges. You've just got to use it or you'll lose it. Yeah, sitting down is bad for you. Use it or lose it. Love it. OK, I think we've covered that one pretty well. Pretty important breaking story there. Let's do the mail on Sunday. And the secret to a happy household, is it communication? No, it's the ability to ignore each other at very high speeds, Jonathan. Oh, like my parents on the motorway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, they're fine. Uh, the secret to a happy household, a reliable internet connection. Study reveals that nearly half of adults believe good Wi-Fi is vital for keeping peace in their homes. So Wi-Fi has become the glue that keeps households happy and harmonious, researchers suggest. So a poll has found that nearly half of respondents believed it was vital for keeping the peace. If you want to have a good marriage, if you want your kids to stay in line, you've got to have fast broadband. And that is why we are sponsored by BT Fibre Optic Broadband tonight. He always does this. We're not sponsored. We're not, We're not really sponsored not, by that's anyone. We're not massive sponsored. Lie that's <laughs> that's the problem. Lead to <laughs> also, you need good Wi-Fi for your dating apps in the first place, don't you, to hook them in? Exactly. That's how people find partners now. Yeah, but you don't want their Wi-Fi to be too good because they might have more options. <laughs> you want yours to be good. That's so, how it works. few dates in. The thing is, the... do people not get on before the internet? I would almost say having no internet is better than bad internet that cuts in and out because that's very frustrating. But if you've got no internet, you just read. It is well, interesting. What, yeah. what, what were we doing before the internet? I mean, life was very boring. You know what Peter better. Hitchens says? What does Peter Hitchens say? He take? says that central heating was the beginning of the end of a family because everyone used to sit around the fire for warmth and have discussions, and then central heating came along and we all got pulled apart. To be fair. I really like him. I love Peter Hitchens, he's a hero, <laughs> but he says everything was the beginning of the end. <laughs> Television, central heating, oxygen. And he's right about all of it. He's right about all he of is. it. Let's have a look then at the Mail on Sunday and just what this country needs. Advice on how to freeload, Cressida. But one man claims he has cracked the secret to finding the very best bargains after he stalked the yellow sticker ladies in his local M&S, I think that's supposed to say. Uh, well, this is a story very close to our hearts because all the GB News people shop at M&S. Am I technically advertising? Other shops are available. We've got one nearby. So yellow, sti yellow stickers in M&S are a big deal because it just means everything's cheap. And this guy, Charlie, has dedicated some time to working out when to go to M&S to get your yellow sticker going out of food, uh, going out of date food. And he says you should go from 3 or 4 p.m., but, of course, it does depend on when your branch closes. Also, this goes back to what Michael J. Fox was saying about how it was harder to get famous. This guy's now famous for <laughs> reviewing yellow stickers in M&S. So... Yeah, this is you... the world we live in. It's a sick, degenerate world, and I want no part of it. Well, speaking of that, maybe we should go to the last story because the Daily Star Sunday has this story about your inevitable future, Jonathan. Future? Oh, the sex robots one. Yeah, that's what I went with. Why do you think I bought a Roomba? <laughs> because I like the chase. So... <laughs> mo <laughs> Is that the little thing that hoovers up? Yes, it around? does. <laughs> I got it. Hoover it does. Most people want to have sex with <laughs> robots. New robosexuality study reveals. Uh, so, new reason. Look, I got there at the end. I've had a clangor of a show, but I got one good joke in. <laughs> Look, want people, people want to bang robots, and obviously they are pretty sexy and they're going to look like whoever you want them to. This was an episode of Futurama. Uh, Lucy Liu was one of them, and Fry ended up having a relationship with Lucy Liu. And it was led to. It, Peter Hitchens was right. It was, it, that was the beginning of the end. No idea what you were talking about there, but I think <laughs> clangor, was that a pun? Because it sounded like that. Um, Cressa, any you know thoughts what I'm going to say. It's sex sad, and are they going to make robots that are male that want to talk to you or something? I don't know. Well, it says uh, that. It says um, <laughs> women are more likely to just be friends with robots. Literally says that there. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Wow. Uh, I think it's very sad. And Lucy Lou isn't a robot. No, no. Uh, Lucy Lou wasn't robot the form. robot. Well, yes. that's very misleading, isn't it?
I just can't believe that we now have to deal with robo-sexuality as a new sexuality. <laughs> They're going to have rights and everything. They're going to have, like, marches and parades. They're going to have robot brothels or yeah. robots, as they could be called. I don't it's think that's ridiculous. OK. All right. No. Well, the show oh, is pretty much over, so Thank let's God. Another quick look at Sunday's front pages. So, the Mail on Sunday has She Is Lying, Raina A Tells Police. The Sunday Telegraph has the much bigger story. Iran launches swarm of kamikaze drones at Israel. The Observer has at-risk children farmed out to illegal private care homes. The Sunday Express far-left plot to hijack Labour. The Mirror Fury at Megan Bro's sick YouTube vids. The Daily Star Sunday, my name's Fido, and I'm a telly addict. Those are your front pages. That is it for tonight's show. Thanks to Cressida and Jonathan. Headlines is back tomorrow at 11 p.m., presumably. If you're watching at 5 a.m., then stay tuned for breakfast. But next, we've got Mark Dolan's special live on the breaking situation in Israel. So stick with us. Warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers, sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening. Welcome to our latest GB News weather from the Met Office. So it's been a bit of a drier day for most of us, but there has been a few showers around. Low pressure never too far away out towards the north of the UK, but higher pressure down towards the south and the west does bring something briefly more settled. There have been those showers around and they will continue through much of Saturday evening, pushing in from the west across parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. And we could even see some snow continuing across the high ground here. Elsewhere, though, generally turning much drier through the evening, with those clear skies allowing temperatures to drop into the single figures, around 7 or 8 degrees across the south, but even lower further north, perhaps some frost in places. So a chilly start across Scotland, Northern England and Northern Ireland, but those showers quickly pushing in from the west again as we go through Sunday morning and into the afternoon. Further south, after a bit of a drier start to the morning, there will be some sunshine through the first part of the day, but some cloud bubbling up as well, and we could see the odd one or two showers across Wales and into northern England. Less warm than we saw on Saturday, highs of 14 or 15 in the south, and a little bit closer to average further north. Monday starts